welcome to StoryPath Showcase, uh, where each week we get together and we play different games uh, or different story arcs, I guess, uh, with our various game worlds that use the StoryPath system. Uh, I'm your host and the story guide, Travis Legg, and uh, we are playing Dystopia Rising Evolution. This is episode two, if my ability to count to two is still intact. Um, it's been a long couple of weeks, so who knows? <laughs> Um, but uh, I uh, am joined with a amazing and wonderful cast of folk. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, pass around the talking privileges and have each of you introduce yourselves. Go ahead and tell us who you are, what you do, who you're playing, uh, your pronouns, their pronouns. Um, and then when you're finished with that, uh, go ahead and pass it on to uh, the next person. Uh, and let's start things off this session with uh, Katie. Please go ahead and give us all of your pertinence. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Katie Griffin. Um, what I do is I day job. I usually do weddings um, in my free time. I really like freelancing with Onyx Path Publishing and other writing companies and tabletop companies um, and also like running some virtual LARP events. Um, I uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I will be portraying Fixer, who is our tough love healer. Uh, her pronouns are also she, her. She loves Mac, the big truck that you'll see shortly. And I'm going to pass it off to Heather, who looks like she's right below me, but is probably somewhere else on the screen. Yeah, you're somewhere else on my Brady Bunch. <laughs> Um, hi, I am Heather Halstead. Um, I am a filmmaker um, in my freelance filmmaker in my free time and otherwise office manager in my not so free time. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I am playing uh, my pronouns are she her and playing Vess, our uh, tainted, also tough love uh, <laughs> uh, character. Um, and her pronouns are also she her. And I will pass it off to Chris. Hello, my name is Chris Kitts, and um, I am small. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. In my day job hours, I help fancy lads with fancy restaurants, and in my off hours, I am a DJ and sometimes freelance um, DTRPG and LARP writer. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I think I said that already, and I will also be playing uh, Emil Cantor, who everyone has started calling Father Cantor, which is weird. Stop that. And um, he is a, a wandering mushroom dad. Uh, I think that leaves uh, Jesse, question mark. I'm sorry, <laughs> my brain is tired. Um, I'm gonna pass it off now. <laughs> um, I, my name is Jesse Morrow, I'm uh, she, her. I am playing Linux LimeWire, also she, her. Um, our digitarian, uh, Jones helper person. Um, I, in real life, play a uh, tech sales executive, and I am very excited to pass it on to Michael. Hi, uh, I'm Michael Pucci. I pronouns are he, they. Uh, I am playing Lep whose pronouns are also he, they. Uh, the Sensorite, who is a slow motion fungal train wreck of a life, uh, which isn't really that far off from out of game, so we'll move forward. Uh, actually, in real life, uh, I am a marketing executive, and in my spare time, I write tabletop RPGs, LARPs, fun stuff, publish stuff, do stuff. Yeah. That's about it. And I'm going to hand it back off to Travis since, you know, all of us are done. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I believe I may have forgotten at the beginning. Uh, my I, my pronouns are he, him, but I also have no objection whatsoever to the singular they. Um, and nor should you if you're an English speaker, because really, it's, old, it's, it's older than. Uh, anyway, um, as you can tell, we're all big buckets of energy tonight, so we're going to just dive right into it. <laughs> <laughs> when last we met, uh, you had um, been in Morganstown and had a spot of bad luck as your vehicle uh, was stripped while you were inside having a drink. Uh, after discussing the incident with uh, a local fellow who was 
sort of half dead on the side of the road and talking to the assistant at the uh, local barber surgeon's office, um, you discovered that might be one of the kids of the town's mayor involved. Uh, the town's mayor offered a chance to um, not only make it up to you, but also give you an opportunity to make some money by running an errand effectively for them, uh, heading up north up to the pit in an attempt to recover some supplies that are supposedly abandoned there. Um, in order to achieve this task, you were given the Mac, a massive war rig uh, that is heavily armored and armed. Um, it's what, probably one of the finest and one of the most expensive machines uh, on the road. And it is uh, up to Fixer to drive it right now, I believe, correct? That was what you had settled on, was Fixer was going to be uh, handling the wheel. Um, and if I recall properly, you had just like basically we're just loading up the vehicle to leave is that uh is that right was there Sounds anything right. else that you were trying to do before you got out of there uh only other thing i remember is emil got a sort of face to face time and made them admit that we didn't really have a choice yeah it was they, emil on linux yeah they uh implied that it was um that you were being voluntold, I guess, was was kind of the, the feel that you got. But uh, and then you were also taking with you Clutch, who is the mechanic who built the Mac and um, Jester, who is the one who knows where the uh, where this sort of supply, uh, this hidden stash of supplies is. Right. Um, so you'd all load it up start hitting the road, you have about 80 miles or so to cover. Um, as you take off, are you, are, were you waiting for the sun to come up to take off, or are you going to just take off kind of middle of the night? I'm not really sure we could keep Fixer from not immediately driving off with this machine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say, logically, we would wait till sun up but we have the Mac. That's so. fair. And it can move Go. at a pretty good clip. Uh, barring any um, unforeseen circumstances, uh, you can probably make the drive in about two hours. Um, it is a long stretch of wasteland between here and there. Uh, so there's no real telling what you might run into. But you are in a pretty... Uh, fortified vehicle. Is there anything that you would like to do, any way you would like to spend this time that you have uh, while you're on the road? Those of you who are not occupied with the road. Uh, Emil would like a word with Jester when the opportunity presents itself. Yeah, sure. Um, Jester's uh, just sitting there um, until anyone speaks to him. Uh, he's kind of going through his bandoliers and, and pockets almost obsessively, just making sure everything is where it's supposed to be, making sure everything is um, easy to reach. Uh, as you're walking up to him, why don't you go ahead and give me a, we'll say a lore Roll something, something that would, uh, or if you have another, uh, a, a, another skill that you would recommend, something that would be in regards to like recognizing his gear, um, recognizing where the origins of what some of the things that he's carrying might be. My guess would be a like lore. lore would make sense for right? that. But I just, I just click it, right? Yeah, you just click lore, and then whichever uh, attribute you would. Uh, most directly associate with this role. All right, let's do lore and for recognizing stuff. I would think, honestly, just intellect. Okay. Mm, that's one whopping success. All right, you do notice that some of the stuff that uh, he's carrying looks um, 
pretty unfamiliar. But you do, you can place the actual like crossbow pistol that he's carrying. Uh, looks remarkably like those that are used uh, by raiders, specifically by dread surgeons. Uh, son, do you have a moment? Uh, judging by, by the speed that we're going, I got probably about 240 of them. Mind if I chew your ear for one or two of them? Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead, have a seat. He, um, like, scoops his jacket away from his butt, plops a squat. Uh, if you don't mind my asking, why, um, why, what do you stand to gain from surrendering this cache of medical supplies to, um, Tracera? Well, I mean, you know, you go to a new place, you want to be in good with the boss, right? You want to, you want to be in good with the people who's in charge. You know, that's how I ran into some troubles in, in Motor City, you know, because I wasn't in good with people who was in charge. And then when things got, uh, when things went sideways, me and my crew, we had to go. Uh, so I think if, you know, I'm looking to make a new home, I get in good with, with the boss lady and, and then, uh, and then it's all smooth sailing from there. Do you mind if I uh, ask what happened with your crew? Are they, are they well? Are you all that's left? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm the only one that's left. Uh, yeah, Rocky uh, died on the way out of town, and uh, and uh, as we was, was crossing the lake, uh, that's when Vin Vin bought it, and uh, yeah, poor poor Teresa, and yeah, she just couldn't handle the trip. Yeah, yeah, she. Uh, she just couldn't, she couldn't take it, and uh, she, she freaked out and took off. I mean, I'd like to think that maybe she landed on her feet somewhere, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think she might have landed in, in, in you know, someone's belly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that sounds rough. I'm sorry. I can't even imagine how that has to feel. Are you? No, okay? it's a, it's a, it's, it's a bummer. Thanks for asking. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad that we we're able to discuss this. Do you have any terribly uh, painful and tragic memories you'd like to have a conversation about? <laughs> when you put it that way, I feel even worse for asking. <laughs> no, nah, it's fine. I'm new. You don't know who I am. You know, I could just be some kind of a con artist, some kind of a, you know, some some kind of a monster or something like that. You know, it's fine. Hey, you could be. You absolutely could be. Um... <laughs> Why why Morgantown? Morgantown was it the first town you came across or uh, it's the first one I came across that uh you know didn't uh didn't welcome me in at gunpoint. This it seems like a nice place. I, I I don't like you know my people we have to deal with enough suspicion as it is. I don't I don't like being in a place that's gonna, you know, treat me worse. So uh you know the boss lady, she's very good. She's a very nice person and she took us you know, she, she let me come in and, and and didn't didn't give me no troubles more than she would have given anybody else. So seems like a nice place to put down some roots. Maybe you know, maybe maybe get a wife. You know, he kind of like looks at the the crossbow gun situation and like kind of looks back at uh, Jester and he kind of like tilts his head and is like, "Your people or different your people." What, what do you mean? Yeah. Oh, oh, this? Yeah, I took this off of off of when I'm uh, when I'm surgeon, guys. You know, they got the like. I got I, I yeah, yeah. I'm 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 mutant, you know. Um, but I'm okay. The the guy that I took this off was not okay, and is is very much not okay now. I assure you understood just i like to figure out where the have they treated you well since you arrived oh at morgenstown yeah the boss lady's real nice the people are real nice you just gotta watch out her kids are kind of you know that electric creeps me out yeah they um they sure are a family well, yeah that's something all right 
I just wanted a little more perspective on everything. And, um, you know, if you should happen to want to talk about any of the things you've been through, um, I can certainly sympathize, if not empathize. Well, you know what? I, I truly, uh, I truly and well appreciate that. That's very, very thoughtful of you. And, uh, frankly, it's not a kindness I'm used to, uh, experiencing, you know? Um, so you just tell me if you need anything and then I'm happy to listen to you too. I'm, I, I was, I was rude. Uh, when I said the thing about the stuff, it was no. not very nice. There's a difference between rude and a good sense of dry humor. No offense taken. Oh, that's good. Cause I, I am, I am humorous and somewhat dry. We got anything to drink in this place? <laughs> Actually, um, <laughs> fun fact. Where, where's my mental inventory of the objects I have on my person? Um, yeah, he, um, he reaches into his jacket and produces another, like, just shitty beaten up bottle of, of mystery hooch and just, like, places it on the rig next to, um, Jester. And he's like, that's on me. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. And he just pours it down, like, letting it run out the side of his mouth, just very sloppily, like, wastefully just slamming. Oh, this is some good stuff right here. You know? Oh, goodness. Thanks so much. And Drink just it all in one go. Spraying while he's talking. Um, while this conversation is going on, what's everyone else doing? Is everyone else sort of listening, paying attention? Um, did anyone have any questions for uh, or off of the conversation or, or for the conversation? Uh, I'm probably acting about half my age walking around the vehicle, uh, looking into things far too much and understanding none of it. Beautiful. Um, clutch is probably like, oh, no, that you don't want to touch that. That's very Why? dangerous because that, 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 that will, um, fire the missiles and we don't want to do that particularly before aiming them. How do you aim them? Uh, th it's this control console over here, but it's super complicated. <laughs> well, in that case, I should learn now because eventually you're going to die and I'm going to have to fire the missiles. I mean, eventually we're all going to die. Uh, I'm hoping that none it's of true. us uh, do that on this trip, though. It's <laughs> actually not that bad when you think about it, because we're just returning back to our our home. But it is that bad if we're like 70 miles north of home. No, I mean our home home back to the Mortis Amaranthine. I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just don't care and she walks away <laughs> excellent i'm gonna proceed to start trying to figure out the controls to the missiles by myself uh, uh, wonderful uh go ahead and give me a technology roll please i have that ish <laughs> and what attribute do you feel that would best pair with in this scenario uh probably intellect okay Well, I got two successes just starting on the intellect. Okay. And no technology, actually. No technology? I just, hey, oh, it's all in the firearms. Okay. Yep. Um, so you're fiddling with it, and you're pretty sure um, there's like a joystick sticking out that you're pretty sure controls the aim. Uh, the only thing you can't seem to figure out is how to get it to like actually deploy. Because the, the the missile launcher is like inside an armored shell on the top, so you can't find like the button or the control to make it deploy out. Well, Lep is looking at that. I'm gonna walk over and slap his hand. Stop that! <laughs> Very important for me to figure this out. Here. What was that? I don't I don't want to not know how it works when we get there. Don't set it off before we get there either. So you know that button sets it off? No, but you don't know that it doesn't. But I, you don't know that it does. Let's err on the side of caution. Ah! <laughs> if we are erring on the side of caution, would the group of us have gotten into a vehicle to go into obviously what is a doomsday trap in relation to a, lots of explosives around us? One missile Don't. says over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Four, Four missiles. missiles. Four missiles. Four missiles. 
I, I have a brief question, which is, is the truck in such a position that I could yell back at them? Yeah, and, absolutely. And so join you join in the conversation or is it a separate like thing? You're, you're not in a separate cab. You do see that there's a switch. Um, it's more of like a like a big handle that you can sort of like pull down that will drop a blast door between you and the and the back of it. But otherwise, it is a straight shot. You can shout back to them. And the, the inside of this thing is um, it's basically you've got two 18-wheeler uh, um, full-size tankers that are connected to one another. Uh, there's like armored mesh on the outside so you can walk between them. And you can see between them, unless you close those doors in between them, you can call out from, from one trailer to the next. It's basically a straight shot down. Cool. Uh, Lip, Vess, why don't you just ask Linux? Because Linux is going to give me the obvious answer and I'm going to feel stupid. Probably. Linux, how do I open the Bombay doors? Um, I rolled my technology and intellect and rolled a zero. So... I don't know. <laughs> Press that button. <laughs> See, I told you it was that button. Oh. Clutch runs over. Don't I'm press helping. any buttons. And she well, flips. If you answered the question, I wouldn't have to. She like flips over another. Um, there's like a, a console next to the joystick, and she like flips that console over and hits a red switch on it and flips it back. And you hear like the hydraulics kick off and the missile launcher deploy. Noted. Was it the big red button? <laughs> Shiny candy like button. It, it was, but I hit it. And she like flips the thing back over and closes it there. Now you know how to aim it. Now you know how to deploy it. The trigger on the joystick fires them. I'm not happy. Which is more dangerous, the fact that he knows now or when he didn't know before? Well, I mean, hopefully he knows enough to open the Bombay doors first. Well, it depends where all the bad guys are. And by bad guys, I mean bad guys that aren't us bad guys because batting is moralistically strange. Well, listen, if we've got people inside this thing enough that they that uh, the possibility of blowing it up to get them is even on the table, we've already screwed up. Like it's it's you know we we've been we've made some mistakes leading up to that I'll, I assure you. I want I want you to take a moment and look around this cab here. We've all made some mistakes. We're not bad guys. We help people occasionally. Oh, just because we're bad guys doesn't mean we're bad guys. I'm right here. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. Daddy. Never daddy. Preferably not father. Never daddy. Okay, Pops. Jester hits Let you on, on, on the knee and says, it's okay, they only bust the chaps because they love you. And takes another big swig. Oh, uh, that's true. At least he didn't call you Pop Pop this time. <laughs> I um, forgot about that. Thank you. Pictures, you're driving along. You get about a half hour up the road, and you see up ahead looks like just a wandering crowd, a small horde, probably 50, 60 Zed, just wandering along. Ooh. Ooh. But what if run over? Mm. <laughs> they are kind of like. <clears throat> shambling in the road effectively you know it's it's like when you, it's like if you're driving along you know in, in new england on a you know fall morning and there's like a 20 deer sitting in the middle of the road it's it's like that situation but with zed mm -hmm. all right i'm gonna slow uh, slow down a little bit to give me some more time a hey, uh, clutch yeah do we have a like some way to armor the front so I can like plow through things or is that a no no? Should I just slow down? I mean, besides I the plow that's on the front, what, what do you see? Oh, just like you know, 
30, 40, 50, 60 ish. Zed, maybe. Gun, it will 30. be 30. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Going to grab on to something. <laughs> I rush over so I can peek out through a slot. Go ahead and give me a, a piloting roll. Sure. I have something that might help. Uh, do I ha- have uh, I well no that's in relation to vehicles never mind um, alright so I'm going to do pilot zero and uh, dexterity sure okay <laughs> Goodbye. Excellent. We're actually no longer on the road, even. We've just started <laughs> flying. So you're driving along, and as as you're as you're coming along, you see one of them. Um, despite the horde, kind of as a whole, just sort of shambling along, one of them sort of just turns very quickly, like starts, like they've suddenly, you know, come to complete awareness. And that startles you enough and shakes your nerves enough that you start to, you know, swerve. And Clutch goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Leans in. And like, <laughs> I think there's a full dead. <laughs> grabs the wheel to keep you from swerving off the road. Um, you continue moving forward. Uh, I'm gonna, the, I'm gonna look back at the Z and see if it's still acting weird. No, like when you you don't pass it so much as you drive through it. Oh, um, that's fine. <laughs> and those of you who are in the back, uh, given the relative size of the Mac, I know a couple of you braced yourselves, but you're you're probably thinking to yourselves, "This should go relatively easy. We should be able to run just some bodies over." And you're like just kind of tossed about more by the swerving of the vehicle than the actual running over of any bodies. Um, but as you check the rear view mirror, uh, you can definitely see there's just sort of like a, a thin paste on the highway uh, where this shambling horde once stood. Everything's fine. I haven't seen that many bodies since my ninth, 12th birthday. That's so Can we cool. do without the swerving next time? Just, just I mean, I don't really it, drive. It, it adds flavor. It adds flavor <laughs> to the delicious dish that is Mac. Oh, thanks. Fletch leans in and says, listen, short of like the wall of a reactor, this thing will drive through anything. You just you know where there's hit. a wall of a reactor? I was grabbing a I haven't tried it. Theoretically, short of the wall of a reactor, this thing will go through anything. So when in doubt, gas straight forward. Got it. Gas straight forward. I'm good at that. Are you, you sure? She turns and yeah. walks to the back. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm, I'm focused now. I'm focused. <laughs> Won't be distracted by any more full dead. They're just going to get bowed down. It's fine. It's good. I got it. I got it. Doing the paste. Hmm. Do you feel filtered? Uh, no, 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 maybe. I don't know. No, no, I did not. No, it was clearly a zombie. Maybe. What's the paste now? It's more of a chum. Jester says, hey, it was standing in the middle of the road, whatever it was. I don't care what I don't care if it was a blue blood. Don't stand in the middle of the road when there's a giant truck coming at you. <laughs> That's how you get run over. Kind of hard logic to argue. This is a very expensive truck. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Lep, what are you thinking? I, I don't. Yeah, he's plotting, and I don't like it. 
Nothing. Nothing. Mm, I don't believe you. Hey, look, a distraction. Oh, look! <laughs> uh, you continue I'm driving on, a truck. You continue on down the road. Um, the remainder of the journey is relatively uneventful. You do see some um, rather terrifying wildlife kind of off the side of the road. A couple of sightings, nothing coming too close. Um, the Mac is a moving fortress, but it's also far from quiet. So uh, anything that would reasonably be scared off by its engine is going to be scared off. Um, at the very least, weary of it. Uh, it's probably about, I would say, maybe 1 a.m. as you start to pull up to the very outskirts of what was once known as Pittsburgh. Did you guys see the size of that chicken we passed? It's like a house. That was a lot of chicken. I would like, who's all uh, close enough to look out the front as you're approaching the city? I think Emil's sticking sure. to the back for the most part. I'll be up close. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and roll integrity cunning for me? Uh, and you can roll this as well, Fixer. Zero. All right. Uh, I do not have integrity at all. I don't have integrity. You don't notice much. Um, you do see you're, cut, you're coming up to a bridge. Um, the bridge is up. It's like one of those raised raise lowering bridge. Uh, but as you start pulling up toward it, um, Jester sort of hops up out of his seat and kind of rushes up to the front. He says, all right, listen, uh, this is where things are going to get a little hairy. Um, these guys run a con. Okay, they're going to claim that they're part of some city government. All right, they're going to want a tax to lower the bridge. I don't think they're dumb enough to try to pick a fight with this thing, but just be on the ready. If they make one move, be ready to pop one of them. Uh, can we talk to him before we pop? I mean, they're con artists. Yeah. Hey, it's That's your face. Fine. We don't need to kill them, though. Like, they're just going about their business. He sits in the back and, like, loads his gun. <laughs> what if I, what if we just drive fast and they'll bridge. get out of the way? Bridge. Bridge. Oh, bridge. bridge up. Mm. Vehicle forward. Bridge up, vehicle forward, vehicle down. Mm. Fix or lose car number two, one week. Oh, sh ah, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see Clutch like doing a little bit of math, like, yeah, there's no way we can jump that. <laughs> but what if somebody's good enough at talking that they convince them that we're awesome? That's what Linux just said. Yeah. I mean, you just you could just pay him the tax too. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just letting you know. But you know, and he sort of gets all the way back in the back uh, car, sits down with his back against the back wall. On are these guys like violence? Is that why you're worried? They're bandits. Yeah, they're not good people. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. You know, if they just ask you for the tax, just give them the tax and go. But if they give you one inch of trouble, I would shoot first and ask questions later. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. I feel like, well, I was going to say, there's some people here that are really great at talking that aren't me, and I have full confidence that in their skills. Um, I appreciate that, Fixer. I'll do my best. Oh, he puts a hand on his shoulder like, okay. Uh, you pull up to the 
um, to the uh, toll booth, basically. Uh, there's a building on either side. There's kind of a thrown together like caution arm that goes down over the road, but it looks like it's made out of like bits of scrap metal and pipe and whatever they could, you know, weld together to stick out enough to go across the entire road. Um, and now that you're walking up to it or driving up to it, I'm sorry. Uh, now in the distance, you can see across the river kind of to your left some lights like enough lights that that looks like a, a settlement um dead ahead is you know the bridge is in your way but but on the other side of it you don't see any sort of light sources any sort of signs of civilization and as you pull up uh two guards come out of each of the there's a tower on either side two guards come out of each one and sort of step up to the vehicle Yes, you watch the left, I'll watch the right. And I promise no missiles unless we really need them. If we really need them, I promise to let you hit the button. Deal. The uh, first guard kind of walks up to the driver's side and taps on the window. I'm going to roll down the window. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Uh, it's a nice ride you got. Yeah. Um, it comes with being part of the local government. Um, we're actually here to uh, inform you that you're going to need to raise your taxes. You need to go up at least 10% uh, on behalf of Aurora Fauci. Oh, yeah? Yep. Uh, why don't you, uh, how would you like to go about convincing them that this is the case? I would like to roll a leadership and uh, manipulation. To and Okay, and is this... Uh, I'm a cunning orator, and I'm an entertainer, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, let me check and see if there's uh, just a benefit from the cunning orator. Is that just overall uh, benefit that that offers? I don't remember, and I don't have my book up. Or is that listed as a specialty? No, it's a it's a edge. Okay. I think. Convincing orator. Convincing order. Oh, uh, I might have that. I do have my uh, book up, so just give me one second. I'll find it. Or if you can find it first. Oh, that's I got it. Beautiful. I got it. Um, your character knows how to get people to listen to her and sway the minds and hearts of the masses. Whenever the character is addressing a crowd or group of people larger than three, gain two enhancement to influence actions. Beautiful. Uh, you can have two enhancement. I am going to give you um, three complication to this role, however. Uh, and... There's a very good reason for that. It's a spoiler that I can't really tell you. But if you don't overcome the complication, um, then you're going to find yourself in a much stickier um, diplomatic situation. I'll put it that way. Gotcha. I haven't pulled out my family of note for my contact either, but we'll do that in a minute. Okay. So leadership and manipulation. Beautiful. Thirty um, seconds. With your enhancement, that makes five. So that's enough to buy off the complication and then some. Mm -hmm. um, Garrett says, Well that, done. That effect. Yep, I didn't hear nothing, about, hear nothing about that at all. You got any uh, paperwork? You got a writ? You got uh, a notice? You got. Is my word not enough? Can you read even? Could you just raise the taxes? Yeah, I, of course I can read. Good. Think I'd be out here if I couldn't read? We'll send something your way on the morrow. It's late. We have to get through. Please draw, lower the bridge. Sure. You said 10%, Thanks. right? 10%. So it'll be 66 UPP, please. We don't tax the messenger. That's messed up. Hey, we tax everybody. Okay. Um... We're not going to pay it because we're the ones that told you to do the increase. So 
All right. Well, since I don't have any paperwork to back that up, then 60 is fine. Um, one moment, I'll go get the paperwork. I go in the back and write down, raise taxes 10%. <laughs> oh, 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 add on there, free pass for us. And allow your girlfriend, the messenger, uh -huh. to get the, the, the gate lowered. And then I come back up and hand it to them. He looks at it and he, hand, he like shows it to the other guard that's standing with him. And you see the guards on the on the uh, passenger side are definitely like drooling over the vehicle. They're just kind of checking out, looking at the tires, pointing at everything, just ooh and on. Um, I'm gonna make eye contact whenever I can see them and just like bounce my bat on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even. Um, the first guard says, uh, "Okay, this is fine, but." I don't understand why are you going why are you going into the triangle? Official business. And I give uh Linux a thumbs up. Fair enough. Uh don't say we didn't warn you. Um but you didn't warn us. He walks over and waves his hand, the bridge starts but, to drop, the arm but, starts to go up. He shouts. Um, as all this mechanical noise is happening. Uh, so those of you who are, all of you, I'll let, go ahead and give me an integrity cunning roll to see if you can make out what he says. It's going to have a complication of two due to all of the noise from the machines. Uh, no, we found that first. These dice do not like any of us. No, they, they actually like Linux very much. Now, not earlier. Not earlier. Just got to warm them up. Goose egg. All right, so is that everyone's rolls? Linux, you make out, like, careful, avoid, and um, shady side. That's all you make out. Hey, what's shady side? Yes, the, the 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 mechanic. She shrugs. Jester says that's where we're going. We're going to shady side. So why do you ask that, Linux? Because uh, that they said something about avoiding shady side, and it said careful. I probably want. They probably want the stash for themselves. They probably got to figure it figured out. We got to move. No, that's not. They don't. You don't say. Be careful. Avoid the place where we're going to go and steal from. That's silly. You wouldn't do that if you was a bandit and some official people with official looking paperwork came in and said they was going to the place that you was about to hit. You wouldn't tell them to avoid it. Those weren't bandits. Yeah, I'm going to stomp over to him and just take my bat and slam it like onto the ground and be like, if they were bandits, they wouldn't have taken the paperwork. So what the fuck is shady side and what the fuck is the triangle? I'm yeah. definitely trying for an intimidation check on this guy to get him to give me Go some for information. It. Go for it. Go ahead and roll intimidation um, and then whatever attribute you feel is most appropriate. I do not see an intimidation, actually. Would it be persuasion? Persuasion or command would be what it would uh, fall down to, actually, I think. I don't see command either. Um, do persuasion, nothing. <laughs> sometimes I get my skill sets between systems backwards, mm -hmm. so give me... Persuasion and manipulation? Maybe, Presence? maybe, yeah, manipulation or empathy? I did no persuasion Leadership. and might, if Leadership. that is okay, or I can roll something else. But might sometimes. might is fine. <laughs> might make sense. So two successes. Okay. Um, I just need to check the sheet real quick. Give me half a second here. Just want to make sure I'm not shorting you a skill here. Yeah, generally that would be uh, leadership persuasion. Yeah, leadership is what it is instead of command. 
So if you had a higher leadership, you're allow you to roll that too, but um, or instead rather, um, yeah, he uh, looks pretty, you know, cowed by you. He says, "Oh, that's how it's gonna be, huh? You're gonna just uh, threaten to knock me around if I don't what tell you more than I already told you?" Yeah, pretty much. What do you want from me? That's where that's where the stuff is. I want to know why they're so scared of it. I want to know what you're taking us into. I don't think they're scared. Why don't you roll uh, empathy or something else to see if you maybe can get a read on him? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Empathy. Goose egg. What would the attribute be? Cunning? Question mark? Sure. Yeah, or fast intellect. thinking. Oh, two successes like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> you do not believe that he's being uh, forthright with you. You definitely get the impression that he's uh, dancing around the topic, that he's not being 100% honest. I'm going to take the bat and slam it against the side of the thing next to his head. Which says, hey, easy on the um, hull. Just kind of glances. <laughs> yeah, careful, <laughs> careful with the truck. <laughs> yeah, because your bat's stronger than the side of a, re a reactor. Exactly. Lep. Don't so. let him hear that. <laughs> he sort of shrinks in his seat a little bit. Well, you think I used to being bullied? I think that you're probably very used to being bullied, which means that you know that I'm not bullshitting you when I say that I'm going to break your legs. Hey, it just means it's going to be harder for you to carry stuff. Yeah, well, I'd rather go in prepared and knowing what we're actually fucking going into and have to carry a little bit less. We're going into a whole bunch of supplies, mostly medical supplies. And what else? Some buildings. Emil. Hey, Emil. Cool, I'm going to break his leg. Hey, Emil. Right. Emil's just like... <laughs> hey, Emil. Be the good daddy. Um, that bad well, mommy, good daddy. Go. I think this calls for an initiative roll. <laughs> yeah, Emil's been sitting, like, literally next to Jester this whole time with his walking stick, just like... <laughs> Uh, so you do not have to partake in it, but if you wish to partake in the initiative role, uh, you may do so. Uh, I will partake just in case, since I, I am a range partake. fighter. Just in case. What do I roll for initiative? There should be an initiative button on your sheet, like a little green uh, button on the on your quick bar. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> this is going to go poorly. It's going to be great. And has everyone who has wanted to roll initiative rolled and it has shown up in the initiative tracker? Beautiful. All right, Jester's got the first go. Um, he's going to lean back and he's not even, he doesn't draw his crossbow pistol so much as he just spins the holster at his hip and lets it go into your, into your gut. I would like, like as soon as you draw back for fast draw. Okay. Um, that gives you uh, uh, the, ability the ability to place to yourself. Call in. It. Yep. Right, okay. All right. So yeah, he basically he waits until you draw back, but then he leans back and goes to fire. So what would you like to do? Uh, I'm just going to level my gun directly at him, and just not no emotion, no staring. Oh, okay. Uh, that does not stop him from shooting. Um, there was all me responding afterwards but i gave okay. him the chance <laughs> yeah uh he is gonna shoot um it does not there's not a firearm report in fact you don't hear anything but the slightest when it fires um guy is sus as fuck <laughs> would you like to uh just take it or do you want to try to like dive out of the way 
Um, I think it's probably a little early to take damage, so I'll try and, and dodge it, especially since I now don't know what the fuck this weapon is. Um, you can uh, then use whichever of your resilience attributes you feel is most uh, appropriate to the situation. Generally, in this situation, be stamina, but you might be like composure to keep your head straight while you dive. Something like uh, that. Stamina sounds good. Is it just straight stamina? Uh, yeah, if you're going to use that as your, you can, uh, if you use it as your full action to dive out of the way, uh, mm -hmm. then you roll stamina twice. Cool. So two. <clears throat> All right, let's see what he gets on his. All right, so you hit the deck. Um, the dart sh shoots all the way down and sticks in the back of the seat where Fixer's driving. Um, you can all clearly see that there's like a greenish like chemical inside that dart. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to fire? Lep? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay. I'm, uh, I am not only going to fire, I'm going to fire with great vigilance and like hostility. I'm going to fan the hammer on him. Okay. Go ahead and make your... Uh... He just shot at what is effectively my surrogate family. All right. Uh, go ahead and make your uh, attack roll. His defense is three, so that will be your uh, difficulty, effectively. Well... I get a plus three, but I got no successes. All right. So you uh, like fan the hammer and he drops with a speed that doesn't look like his body should be capable of. Like he pretty much like grabs a hold of the seat that he's in and like pours down onto the ground underneath it and like pulls the seat down over himself and says, don't worry, it's just a knockout dart. I'm not going to try to hurt your friends, but you need to back off. Clutch says, can we please stop shooting in here? Next action would go to Linux. What would you like to do? <laughs> um, can I go over and analyze the, like, take a look to see if it is a knockout stuff? Sure, absolutely. Um, I would say science or technology would apply here. And is it cunning or intellect? Um, either one, really. Uh, cunning would be like more of like a fast thinking. Intellect okay, well, would be more... it's in combat, so I'll do cunning then. Okay. Um, so that's three successes. Oh, you absolutely recognize this stuff. Yeah, this is a... Um, you're pretty sure this is the sedative that uh, dread surgeons use. It's a paralytic. It's it's a paralytic. It's the stuff that dread surgeons use. And I pull out my gun as my movement action. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Emil, what would you like to do? Um, Emil's going to just slowly rise to his feet uh, using his, his little walking stick. And um, he just kind of like looks around at everyone, looks at Vess and rolls his eyes just very pointedly. <laughs> um, and then looks at Jester and goes... Mm sun you see like this much of jester's eye poking out under like where he's got the seat pulled down over him. <laughs> he's holding his walking <laughs> stick in one hand so it's clear he's like not gripping sure. it with the intent of like striking he's holding up his other hand and he's like i know you've had a pretty hard time lately and i know that folks who are intimately familiar with loss and hard times are Hopefully a little less inclined to look a gift war rig in the bomb bay. Um, would you give me a little bit of grace here to say that maybe Vess overstepped and that maybe we could talk this through? I would love nothing. Vess. I would love nothing more than to talk this through. Uh, Fixer, you're still at the wheel. Are you still moving forward? You're now like on the other side of the bridge by the time this has popped off. And you can see that bridge going up behind you. 
Oh, I, I, you know what? The bridge is going up behind me. I'm, I'm going to like slow down and kind of like casually go forward just in case like shit gets real, real. I can do a sudden <laughs> stop, but I'm going to still keep my eyes on the road just in case there's any more wayward full dead that caused me to swerve because they're out there. Why don't you give turn me, them into paste? Why don't you give me another uh, integrity cunning? Or if there's something else that you'd like to lean on, maybe survival or piloting even, uh, in terms of keeping an eye on what's going on around you, looking out for things, so on and so forth. Um, I'll do a pilot. Yeah, let's do pilot. Uh, let's do uh, cunning probably because you are trying to catch things that are going fast. You know, trying to keep track of movement and whatnot. Um, that is three successes. Excellent. So as you're going along, um, you get probably, you know, as you say you're moving along in a fairly small crawl. So you can kind of see a little bit of movement on the rooftops, not directly adjacent to the road, mm -hmm. but like a couple blocks over, like you're pretty sure you see humanoid movement on those rooftops. And they don't look sway or shambly, that's for sure. I think... There are people ahead or not. I think there's people ahead. Yes. People ahead on the rooftops. Yes. Um, are you, are you guys done? Vess, it is Arguing. your turn. What would you like to do? <laughs> oh, you're muted. It was bound to happen eventually. Um, after getting the, the withering eye roll from Emil, she'll pick herself up and kind of, dust herself off totally doesn't need to but does it anyway it's like okay 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 if it got a little out of hand i'll admit that but look what i'm just trying to communicate here is that if you are more straight with us than you've been being right now we all have a better chance of surviving because i'm gonna fucking just lay it out we're going into this either way so if you're afraid that we're just gonna turn around we're not. But Fair if you're honest with us, we'll be more survive higher survivability. He folds open the the chair and like rolls off from underneath it and says, Sorry about you, you, you chair there, clutch. As he stands up, he puts his foot up on the chair and like pops another dart in from his boot. No, 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 no. Yeah, grab him or if you reload that, I'm going to unload this one. We're going to talk first. Then you can have one less person to fight any dread surgeons you may run into inside that hospital. And? Oh, okay. So I, I, I did have one question. I, I know my brain doesn't work as well as like Linux's or Vex's, better than Fixer's, but. Um, Excuse you. I totally <laughs> see dread surgeons, I think, um, now that you say it. You said yeah. they were people. I mean, okay. Well, sometimes. Dread searches look like people, and people look like one minute. Yeah, what do you want out of me? Just I'm gonna try. I'm, oh wait, I got. I'm really I'm trying to on. concentrate. Good. One minute. Okay. Why did you hide from the front of the vehicle when the guards came up? You went walking to the back where they couldn't see you. Yeah, because I don't like the guards here. I thought they were bandits. They're guards, huh? Six of one, half dozen of the other. What difference does it make? <laughs> I, I, I think we should attach him to the top of the vehicle. No, because that's where the missile launcher is. That's why. Vess will look at Emil almost like she's asking permission. <laughs> Emil keeps walking towards Jester with his hands showing. He's like, I'm going to ask you one more time to trust us the way we're trying to trust you. Who said I didn't trust you? How close am I? Or he lets you walk right up to him. So, I mean, okay. 
He's not going to like try to back away or nothing. He's still standing there like with the barrel of his uh, of his crossbow, like ready to reslot that bolt, but not. He's like hovering like with the lip on the edge of, of the bolt. As soon as okay. Lab said stop, he just stopped. He froze. Okay. Are you telling the truth? And he like claps his free hand on Jester's free shoulder. And as he like drops his hand, he kind of does a little zip and produces his shiv from his jacket sleeve and just gently presses it against Jester's neck. Jester laughs. Am I telling you the truth? About which part do you think I'm lying? Are these your friends we're returning to? My friends. I don't have any friends. I buried my friends on the way here from Motor City, like I told you. Are there dread surgeons inside? Probably. It's a big hospital full of medical gear. What do you want me to tell you? Why are you dancing around it? What do you mean, why am I dancing around it? Because look at me. That's why I'm dancing around it. I know how that's racist, first of all. Second of all. I know how all you people think. You have no idea how I think. That, first of all. Second of all, if you weren't, if you had been more straight with us, we might have thought differently. This is a learning opportunity. And he, like, pulls the shiv back with his, like, palm into his sleeve. And he's like, do you want to try this again? Yeah, sure, fine. What are we driving into? Look, the place we're going, it's... According to local legends, it used to be this big hospital complex, okay? Um, and it's been abandoned since who knows when. And it's just full of stuff, full of stuff that never went bad. It's got like still working, you know, cooling systems and like it's on its own power and all this. It's the mother load of, of supplies. And yeah, so the, the uh, patrols here say that, you know, this guy, uh, that, that there's dread surgeons in there sometimes. But, you know, I got in. Got my eyes on stuff. I didn't run afoul of anything. And besides, we got this big old rig. Like, why would we be worried about a couple of people with scalpels? We're 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 driving into a dread sur surgeon hive. No, nobody said that. Nobody said that. So is that a no? Like I said, is. I'm telling you that it's an abandoned place. Yes, there are rumors locally that it's dread surgeons that hang out there, that go in there and raid the joint, whatever, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I don't know. Okay? No, 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 no. I, I don't think you understand my intent. Uh, raiders don't carry infection, so it's completely fine to just slaughter all of them without thinking twice because they don't need to be prepared to go back to the Mortis Sam Ranthine. I'm, I'm okay with us going into a raider hive. I just want to know so that I know how quickly I'm going to shoot. Well, I think you're going to be shooting real quickly, Lip. I don't know why that's a conversation at all. If something's moving in there and ain't one of us, shoot it. Because it might be people. I don't care. We got a job. Did you have something, Fixer? Oh, I was just going to ask if I could roll intellect and academics to try to think of if Fixer would have ever encountered, with her medical knowledge, would have ever encountered in a book anything about dread surgeons. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, also, if anybody wants to make any sort of a social role, to try to evaluate uh, what Jester is saying at this point, you are welcome to do so as well. And I assume no one is put pressing combat forth at this point, correct? I'm yeah, reloading. I, I'll roll in empathy. I've backed off, but I'm looking grumpy, but pretty much always do. 
That's fair. I am casually reloading as the conversation's going forward. Uh, he's still standing like he was. He looks up at you and says, may I? You may not. Fair enough. He stands up and holsters it. So three for the empathy roll. Okay. Three for the uh, academics and um, intellect. Okay. So with the academics intellect, uh, you are aware of um, kind of just the standard information about dread surgeons that they um, tend to, when they raid, they basically shoot people with this paralytic, drag them off, uh, and use them for parts to extend their own lives, to deal with their own sort of uh, responses to uh, the various hazards of the wastelands. Um, they're beyond reason um, in terms of communication, but they seem to be, out of all of the raiders, probably some of the most technologically advanced and best organized that you're aware of. Like, they don't communicate so good, but they seem to communicate just fine with one another and, and use advanced tactics. And, and uh, they do seem motivated, based on everything you've read, to bring people alive. Got it. And with uh, three successes on your empathy rule, Linux, you absolutely believe he's backpedaling and full of shit. He's back full of shit, you said? He, he's backpedaling and he's full of shit. Yeah, he's uh, he, he set off four or five tells. He's lying. I really wish you'd stop lying to us, mister. Can we kill him? Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a little premature, don't you think? Nope, no, no, no. I, I, I think I, it's very mature. I think it's uh, adult, even. I, I okay. I would not. Mm, I want to kill him. Can we oh, kill him? Uh, well, I mean, you're kind of the boss, so I can't say no. But at the same time, we should probably work together. Yeah, and it him. looks no. Like I don't want to work together. He's he can't <sighs> stop lying, and I don't want to do it. He's, I, well, he's if just it's a set of hands, and I can make a set of hands if we need to. There's enough material back here. I can make us each another set of hands. I don't want to deal with them anymore. Can we just kill him? Clutch says, "Can we not kill anyone in my car?" I agree. Let's open the door and strap him to the top. Okay. Um, he says, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't even know where you're going. Oh, you don't know what you're no, looking for. No, you need for. to hold on if you're up there. You need like a really good grasp. You need to hold on really well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am going to point out that dread surgeons are super organized, so we should not infight. Not... Yeah, way if we're not sure if they're going to stab us in the back and shoot us with paralytic the minute we get in there. Uh, yeah. We don't want to have to worry about worrying about two fronts. This is this, not. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Oh. You're going to no. get us all killed if you go in there not not knowing where you're going or what you're looking for. So I tell you what, I'll hand over my weapons. I'll hand over my weapons. You take my weapons. I won't be a threat to you. You don't have to worry about me shooting you in the back. I want this job to go off well. Then why are you continuing to lie to us? Uh, gee, I don't know. The The baseball bat and the gun might have had something to do with it. Oh, you were worried about either of those. Because I had my gun on you before you pulled the trigger, and you still pulled the trigger, so you weren't worried about the gun. Yep. And it's a I had... I had you by a good half second. You know, sometimes, you know, my the blood don't make it all the way to my brain. That's all. If you don't stop lying to us, then I'm going to have them kill you. We really don't. Well, I really don't want to kill you. Thank you for the correction, Dad. All right, look. We're almost there. Great. Now we know where we're going. So what was the other thing that we needed you for? 
you don't know your way around inside. Now, if you want to just walk in there willy nilly, he starts taking off uh, bandoliers and tossing them on the floor. Uh, takes his gloves off. You want to just walk in there willy nilly, wandering around in a place that might very well be infested with dread surgeons. He takes his shirt off. Knock yourself out. Go ahead. Drops his pants. But, uh, you know, that's cool. You want to kill me? Kill me. Good luck. Best of luck to you. Do uh, you think you can turn this thing around on this road? I would recommend it. Go ahead. Can you put your pants and shirt back on? No, I no. This is a power play. Let him keep them off. No. Well, I see the back sweat glistening on him, and it's really disturbing. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get around to shaving that little, little patch right here. Um, it reminds me of a sad sponge. So, so, what, gonna, so what are we going to do? You're going you're gonna to kill me? He, go ahead. He uh, walks over and grabs like the, the barrel of Lep's gun. Oh, no. No, he doesn't. I, I will actually react by smacking him like naughty child with the barrel. Okay. Uh, was that too far away? Was that the problem? Go for it. I really want to kill him. Is there a reason why I'm not killing him right now? Because you're going to get blood on the fancy controls for the missile launcher? Uh, oh, I'm fine with that. Yeah, but I'm not. You know how hard it is to clean blood out of a missile launcher control? Probably pretty hard. Fine, he can walk around with us naked. It's fine. But he can naked. lead us up front, outside. Go. You want to lead us to where it is and you want this job to go right? There you go. I'll even let you have your shoes. They're oh, not thanks. my size anyway. That's thoughtful. He kicks the shoes on, walks up to the front, <clears throat> and like, like William Rikers his way into the passenger seat next to you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Walk in front of the vehicle. We got to get up to the actual pull-in. Come around the side here. Am I going to have to manhandle it, him it, out? It'll like take longer. And I don't want to be next to this individual longer than we have to. So let's just get to the pullover and then you can make him walk in front of the vehicle. I know you're trying to prove a point. I think your point is taken. There's a naked man sitting in the passenger seat. It's getting ass sweat all over the seat. Well, yes. Oh, Do God, mate. Let's go to the pull through. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Now that you mentioned it, too, that we, we had a pretty full uh, bit of eating before we. Uh, I'm going to immediately like rev the. <laughs> rev <laughs> the truck to go faster. Just go around this building and pull down. There's a little garage you pull down into. Is there a good way to turn around in that garage? Is there enough oh, yeah, space for this? Plenty of room for this. All right. Travis? Yes. Uh, since he took everything off and dropped it, I'm going to go to where his knockout bolts are. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually just going to empty the fluid subtly okay. and then put the bolts back in. Okay. So that cool. if he pulls one and fires it, it'll be empty. He, uh, you, you pull in, as you go down, it's kind of like a loading dock that's uh, basically like one level underground. The ceiling on it's probably about 25 feet. So it's ample room for you to get the 18-wheeler uh, in there, ample room for you to turn around. And you can see it looks like it's got like eight or nine bays. Uh, it's a little hard to tell because shit's kind of broken and busted up and scattered. Um, but you definitely see four, four of the bay doors are absolutely operational. And there's lights in here like electric lights burning um inside cool all right i'll lead may i open um, the door or readers don't use electricity I, they're not that smart uh i'm i'm actually gonna turn the truck around enough so that it's lined up with the exit so if we need to just go we can go 
Uh, while you're turning around, why doesn't everybody inside give me your best? I'm looking for trouble roll, uh, please. <laughs> Emil, you're not built for this life. Okay. So as you're spinning around, Lep, you see some um, very subtle movement, like along the sides of the garage um uh, looks like wait. looks like something like stumbling but not not in like a zed shamble like it looks like there's some like whatever it is that's walking has some sort of a spinal malformation and the the limbs are just sort of like moving almost almost like a puppet so in relation to how the vehicle is currently lined up, would that be right, left, back, or forward? It's on either side of the garage. Like they're coming, like they're coming into the garage from the same entrance that you drove into and like moving along the wall. Um, left and right wall. I, I, I don't even hesitate. The second I see it, I just go left, right wall threats. And Linux, you see... Um, three shapes kind of moving like underneath one of the the doors for the bays like like the light from like like footsteps going past it kind of like the shadows coming out so there's at least three people in the bay as well three people in the bay or something three looking something at least at least nine line us up Uh, I'm going to line up the truck well enough to potentially give them shots from the vehicle on either side. All right. Um, go ahead and give me a piloting roll. Uh, it is a, you can turn, there's room to turn around, but it's not uncramped quarters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, pilot. Um, do you want me to do dexterity with this? Because it's. Uh, sure. Yeah. Let's Dex is fine. Uh, you could also rely on like a cunning or even a resolve, like to keep or composure to like keep your cool while you know that this force is sort of gathering. Sure. Pop with a cunning. So that's one and one. So two. Excellent. You get it lined up. You're pretty sure perfectly. Like you could pop in, hit the gas and, uh, and be gone. What's everyone else doing as the vehicle rests to a stop? I'm peeking out, just trying to get eyes on what uh, Larry saw. You see, Clutch Watch walks over to one side and uh, <clears throat> pulls out like a handle, pushes a button down, and you see a gun turret start to come up. And she like hops on as it's raising up. Clutch, there's another one of those, isn't there? She points to the other turret. Emil kind of like looks at everyone else and he goes, should I um, go pretend right. I know what I'm doing? I, I, I can shoot it if you can. Maybe you. Okay. Yeah. Uh... What was his name? Jester? Joker? Jester. Jo Jester. Jester? I'm actually saying that in character. Like, he's just, I haven't bothered to learn your he name. Says, Jester. My name's Jester. All right, Jester. How about show us the way? Are you serious? Serious as a fart isn't a sealed car. I climb up into the gunner seat. He says, This is rich. You think I'm, you know, leading you into some kind of trap or something? You're going to get me killed. He opens the door, he steps out, and he gets about three steps away from the, the rig, um, and you just see him get peppered with darts. Oh! 
Pull, pull him in. Pull him in. He drops to the no. ground. No, honeypot. They have to go get him now. We just shoot anything that comes out. Oh, yeah, it's, I guess. It's fine. It's just a sedative. He said so himself. He's not going to well, really be him. any use to guide us through this thing. Well, no, he showed us exactly where the bad people are. But that's <laughs> different. It's different, Lap. It's different. I don't think so. Ah, uh, oh. Cool. And on that note, I think that's where we'll take our five minute bio tech, tech break. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, <cool. laughs> so uh, audience walk, watching at home, uh, just hang tight, blink and we'll be right back. People of Cascade, it is time for you to wake up and realize the truth of the city you live in. Neither the FSA nor Forga Tech care about you. The Brain Implant Cascade gives you for free is just a leash on your mind. Where you see a new beginning of the horrors of the Aberrant War, Forga Tech sees a chance to control you when you're at your weakest. And this video game, Terror Surge, is only part of their plan. Last year alone, in 2083, nearly 90% of the citizens of Cascade have played it. It's an addiction not an escape. Don't you see it's nothing more than a new opiate for the masses? We need to. Um, so where were we at? Oh, right. Yeah. So Jester just got uh, filled full of sedative um, and is now unconscious outside of the vehicle. Uh, I think that's a good time to roll initiative, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. We're real bad at the initiative game. <laughs> really are. Linux got one. All right. So as you're all sort of in position now, uh, you see four of these creatures. They're all just blood spattered. Um, effectively covered in what looks like gore dripped like nursing outfits and they have their faces are either wrapped in what looks like a leather sort of substance or perhaps it's flesh that's stapled there. You can't quite tell, but there's no visible sensory organs on their face. And they're moving in sort of like this puppeted sort of rhythm, jerking and shaking as they make their way toward Jester on the ground. Who's first to shoot them? Uh, the first would be um, Linux, technically. I would like to shoot them. All right. Can I like get like get out of the car or lean out? Yeah. So you're going to have to leave the vehicle in order to fire if you're not in one of the gunnery positions. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're getting a delay from us because we don't know whether to date or shoot. The monsters <laughs> yeah we're monster I mean, that's yes. fair I, i'll allow it having this debate in the chat y'all can't see. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the initiative i wanted to roll for i mean listen, it's, a, it's, it's a game of possibilities um that's all i'm saying <laughs> don't oh, let your dreams be dreams right yeah <laughs> I'm going to get out of the car and shoot my shot right now. <laughs> um, so it's dexterity and firearms? Sure. Okay. Excellent. Uh, you fire at the first one. Now, uh, she's not 
really um, trying to dodge. So she doesn't. Um, she doesn't certainly doesn't just take it. Uh, so you are using a pistol? Yeah, I have a, a bolt pistol. Excellent. Um, you have absolutely hit. That is sufficient enough to do the damage. What's the uh, enhancement on that weapon? Um, can we find it? Sorry. Oh, no, you're I've never shoot stuff. I drove before. Does anybody have it on offhand? Looking it up right now. Uh, looks like the enhancement is one, and it's lethal firearm conceal concealable. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So uh, they will take a lethal level of damage, and they you hit them kind of like right in the temple as they're like bending down to pick Chester up, and it goes in one side and out the other, and they just drop dead. Next up is Vess. What would you like to do? Yeah, I'm gonna. <clears throat> sorry, I'm gonna get out of the the car or the war rig and keep it to my back um, as I go towards uh, Jester with my bat at the ready. And I wanna, I wanna try and hit. How many of them are kind of coming into my? There's range? now three that are stepping up toward Jester. Now oh, they are aware of you. Right. <laughs> they would have to be. Um, <laughs> So I want to see how many of them I can hit with one strike because I do have close combat wide strike. Okay. And can you explain how that feature works for the uh, audience at home and the story I can guide? Read it to them because uh, I don't know exactly how it works. You can tell me. Um, uh, I'm skilled at attacking multiple foes at once, landing multiple hits without breaking stride. When the character using a complex action to attack multiple foes at once, she gains one enhancement for each additional target she is attacking beyond the first. Okay. So the way that that will work then is you'll still make a standard uh, close combat. You're not doing anything else, right? You're just uh, attacking. So uh, you would roll your lowest pool, which in this case is going to be close combat. It's going to be the same pool. You okay. will have enhancement of two because there's a total of three targets plus whatever your weapon gives you. Um, and then basically you will div divide your successes between those three targets. Does that make sense? It does. Um, do all weapons give enhancements or no? Generally, okay. yes. If, if it doesn't list anything, it would normally be a one. But you have a Sluggerville bat? Yeah. That's a one. The one? Great. Yep. Uh, then, don't forget, you also have the tier two jagged knife. Which one would be better for this situation? Though I did already say that I had the bat at the ready, so I think I should stick with that for now. Yeah. Now, the bat is two-handed, which I believe means that you uh, deal damage easier, but your defense takes a penalty. Oh, I'm not mistaken. Okay, that works. <laughs> Let me double check that, though. I might be getting my tags backwards. But uh, while, uh, while I'm checking that, you can absolutely roll your attack. So it's close combat, and what is the attribute? Might? Uh, it's up to you, yeah. Might. Uh, I can see an argument for dexterity. I can see an argument for, I mean, you're really just kind of swinging it, so that would probably be about it. So three is the base successes. Right, plus then your three uh, enhancement. Mm -hmm. um, so... Oh, yep. All two-handed actually means is it just requires two, two hands. You don't take a defense penalty. So that's good. Uh, so it's a total of six that you can uh, split between the three that you're swinging at. Two, four, six. All right. Uh, they will each attempt to just be, you know, buff enough to take it. Let's see how that goes for them. Uh, the first one does not. The second one does not. The third one does not. So you come out and just start cracking, like literally cracking skulls. Um, as you're hitting them, the first one that you hit, uh, it does become clear to you that this is not bandages. They have bits of flesh stapled to them. And as you're like knocking some of that loose, you also see that some of them have like eyes in strange places on their face 
underneath that wrapping or like a, what looks like a nasal cavity that's been installed over here. Um, yeah, they're, they're not, their faces have literally been rearranged. Um, and you're uh, continuing the work with that bat uh, very admirably uh, as all three of them drop. Note to self, don't make Vess mad. You already knew that. Yeah, I, I know, but it's good to reiterate things again. That's, I'm I so said the, the same thing you. twice, I think. I mean, help <laughs> take notes. Fixer, it's your turn. What would you like to do? God. Uh, what uh, gunnery systems does this bad boy have? Missile launchers, just saying. No, it has the I'm missile feel- launcher and it has the two um, the two turrets. Both the turrets are occupied right now. Uh, the missile cool. launcher is the only thing that's not. All right. In that case, I am going to kind of edge. Uh, I'm going to first put it in park, make sure the parking brake is on. Okay. So it's not going to go <laughs> any the fuck where. Uh, sure. And then I'm going to pop over kind of like behind us behind ish vests to see if maybe I can grab our wayward guide to pull him back in eventually. Um, because we might need him still. I don't know. He's now paralyzed. I'm not sure how much use he'll be, but we'll see. You could just so, attach him to the front. You drop down, you grab Jester. Um, go ahead and give me a medicine roll if you don't mind sure. uh medicine and anything else or just straight medicine well whichever uh attribute you feel would be uh most fitting for the circumstances you're you know trying to see if you notice something uh like in the middle of this firefight um you know you're, you're sort of assessing him as you're grabbing him uh i'm gonna do medicine and intellect then if i'm a you know, especially if I'm assessing him to see if he's going to be any use at all. Sure. Go for it. All right. You grab him, and um, as you start dragging him, you feel his muscles tense in a reflex response that he shouldn't have if he's paralyzed. Okay. I'm going to try to pass off that I didn't notice that. Okay. And gonna continue to drag him back in as if this was completely normal and everything is just fine. All right, you drag him back inside. Um, that uh, brings us to Lep. What would you like to do? I am in a turret. You are in a turret. <laughs> turret has a gun. Turret has a rather sizable gun. Yeah. Does this gun shoot out smaller guns that in turn shoot, or do it just <laughs> shoot bullets? It just shoots bullets, but it shoots big ones. So I'm going to start shooting roughly here, and I'll end somewhere over here. Okay. Um, I don't know if this should be allowed. No, I'm not going to ask about scatter shotting with a fucking turret. I mean, you can, um, there are stunts you can use with it. So you could like pin down if you wanted to, to, to increase complication uh, for any of the enemies if they try to move into the field of fire. Um, you can just specifically target people. Um, or you can also target like the doors of these um The choke points where, like, things are coming through. Right, yeah. Um, The doors of the base. Are any of them lining up or becoming obstructions on the way to the front? Um, Well, the only way that you can see from where you're at Mm -hmm. into the structure itself is through those loading bay doors. So, like, one way or the other, you're going to have to get through them. (laughs) Yeah. So bullets uh, first is a valid means of entry. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking that, but first what I'm going to do is if Vess is on one side taking care of business, yeah, I promised I would shoot the other side since they were on both sides of us. So Vess, Vess is taking care of one side. I will turn the turret and open fire on threats coming inbound. 
Okay. I like the, the idea that I'm doing the job of an entire turret. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so two successes plus three because it's a firearms. Yep. So would you like to uh, use that to inflict? You could theoretically um, tag up to three people and use a pin down stunt if you were going to use one success on each of the three people you're shooting. I can do that. Uh, it would make sense that I'm just sort of like turning it and haphazardly firing as it's still spinning. Right. And, and you just notice, going, Wee! yeah, when this thing goes off, it's got, it's like, a vehicle mounted 50 cal so like it's lighting up the area like you're <laughs> like there's flashing flashing light going on filling the area that you're in. it's like you're in a rave that's accompanied by staccato gunshots um let's just see if any of the strapers live she don't No joy for the second. And the third one uh, manages to like duck around behind a piece of debris and about half the piece of debris shatters. And then you see her sort of poke around the other way. She is going to have the plus two difficulty because you're using the pin down as well Got uh, it. on her next action, as will anyone else who enters that field of fire. Um, so probably barely audible between the thuds and the shots is. <laughs> that is fair. <clears throat> the middle um, loading bay flings open and you see three guys that are wearing uh like surgical scrubs um rubber aprons elbow like latex gloves up to their elbows and gas masks and they all just sort of in unison uh train their little dart shooters and one is going to take a shot at um Linux, one is going to take a shot at uh, Fixer, and one is going to try to pop Lep up in that turret. At the opera tonight. They will have um, a plus three complication to try to hit you because you're under armor, like you're up in the turret. Uh, the others will just have their base defense to go off of. So I'm going to shoot at left first. Uh, that would be, I don't think enough to get through. Nope. Okay. Um, so they fire and miss at left. It hits the armor plate that's in front of you. The second one shooting at Linux. That is one success to hit Linux. Um, since you've taken a full action, your only real option is to use just a single defense pool. Uh, so you can either like rely on your stamina to take it, um, rely on composure to keep yourself cool enough that you can like duck out of the way, so on and so forth. I do have a leather jacket. Is that? Oh, that does increase their difficulty to purchase the inflict injury stunt on you because it's soft armor, right? Yeah. 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 It would increase the difficulty to, to purchase inflict injury. Okay. Um, so I will uh, do a... I don't, so just any of the resilience ones? Yeah, whichever resilience one you feel is the most appropriate for the situation. Okay. I will do a, a composure to try and keep my cool then. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. As they're nice. firing at you, you like, like just sort of turn out of the way <laughs> as one hits the bounces off the hull next to your head. Um, yeah, it does not, uh, doesn't shake you. Uh, how about, uh, how about Fixer? What's Fixer going to rely on? Well, 
certainly not her armor because this is not armor it's just stylish um uh i'm gonna say she would i feel like i've already taken the action by assessing that person uh yeah so you so you basically just have uh you one you can't roll a full defense is what that means no so yeah. you do still get a reflexive defense cool i'm gonna go with stamina all right let's see what you got I'm gonna try to take it close but not quite yep. um you sort of put an arm up in the hopes that you'll deflect the bolt out of the way um and you look down and you see the bolt hit you in the arm oh shit! and you take a fatigued condition condition got it That brings us back to the top of the order. The two candy strapers who are left are going to rush forward. Uh, one is going to try to tackle Vess. Uh, Emil, did you or did, did Emil not get in the initiative? Did you not roll? Rolled twice, and neither time it came up in the feed. So I was just oh, going to go last. Oh, well, then you may go last, but I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. I'm just reading off a list. Oh, it's totally um, fine. By all means, Emil, what would you like to do? You do see the candy um, strapers starting to come out, by the way. Okay. So, uh, Emil, looking at this situation, is going to uh, gently pick up Jester's gun and bandolier because he does not have a firearm. And this does not seem like a situation where our, like, Father Marin should be running out swinging his staff. So he is going to um, try and shoot at one of the candy stripers, but this is not his expertise so he's gonna just kind of wing it so that would be dexterity and firearms correct uh sure yeah absolutely and you can uh if you'd like i'll let you claim uh enhancement of two because you do have cover fire being laid down for you okay so that's very generous yeah you still got to get a material success so <laughs> well a whole whopping one. That's all you need to kick off that enhancement. Um, and then what's the enhancement on the weapon you're using? Is it just a bolt pistol? Uh, you tell me. It's uh, Jester's gun. Oh, you picked up Jester's gun. Okay. Yes. Um, you shoot them with Jester's gun and it hits them in the shoulder and seems to have no effect whatsoever on them. And is, you it look, a, is it a gun or the bow? It's the, the crossbow pistol is the only weapon you had. Got it. Um, and you look down in, in it and you see that it's full of empty containers who did this <laughs> uh the candy strapers rush forward uh one's gonna try to attack uh attack vest one's gonna try to attack a meal because Emil popped uh, popped his head out, and <laughs> that drew some attention. They are going to have a complication of two uh, because of the cover fire. Or the one that's attacking Emil is. The one that's attacking Bess uh, has no such complication. Um, so we'll resolve Vess's first. Uh, they come running up at you, and you realize once they start, like, dashing toward you, that entire jerky movement thing is just gone, and they are a pair of scalpels swinging around like like a, a whirlwind of, of sharp. Uh, and that would be one success to hit. It becomes two with their enhancement from the scalpel. Okay, do I... Is it a stamina question mark? Yeah, you can use stamina to try to just take it. Yeah, I guess what I'm going to do. All right, that's one, one success. success. So and are you wearing any... Uh, actually, armor is not going to matter here um because this doesn't inflict an injury on you right um as they hit you you realize that the um actual cut itself isn't even that deep as, as you suddenly start to feel extremely woozy you say that but well not but but um i do have two dots in hardy okay. um which means that I can resist and overcome the effect of intoxicants and poisons, um, gaining an enhancement equal to my dots in the edge. Okay. 
Um, unfortunately, oh no, dread surgeon toxin does not allow you a roll to resist. Mm. You just take it. Well, shitty. <laughs> but uh, if anyone is treating you to uh, address that fatigue condition, mm -hmm. um, they will get an enhancement equal to your hearty. Cool. Because someone can make a medicine roll uh, mm. at a difficulty of the number of hits you've taken and uh, overcome it, including you. Um, so that would act as an enhancement in that case. Okay, so I take one fatigue condition. Cool. That is correct. Now we'll resolve the one that's running on a meal. They're not going to have. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> they come running forward and they like, like they, they come around the corner like jerky and then they just drop into a Naruto run straight at you. <laughs> and, and at the last minute, like jump up, spin their uh, scalpels around in their hand, like backwards and just bring them down like towards both shoulders. <laughs> Um, uh, so what are we, um, you can rely on any of your, uh, resilience attributes. So if you wanted to go stamina, uh, you could do that, uh, just to take it, you could go with composure to like, keep your cool as this is coming at you. All right. But yeah. You see Let's, this uh... woman like duck and weave around, like, like run into a 50 cal. Like she has just no sense of self-preservation. I am going to, yeah, I think, I think we're going to go with composure just for the sake of Emil being like, well, if this is my time, this is my time. All right. <laughs> I'm unborn feels. <laughs> it's a zero. You did your best. So that's one net success on their part, plus the one enhancement. So you do suffer a um, fatigued condition. Um, and because I was able to get your initiative to roll, Emil, you may act again. Oh, okay. Um, for the fatigued condition, where on my card does that live? Like, where do I put him? So fatigued uh, goes into your uh, health. I think you track it with health conditions. Let me triple check it. It's on right here on page 124 of the Dystopia Rising book. Ah, injury conditions, yes. So the way fatigued works is... Um, you can take any one stress condition, actually. So you don't take an injury condition, you take a stress condition. It's up to you which one you choose, okay? Um, the number that's next to your stress condition is the complication to all actions that you take. If you don't buy off that complication, your stress condition gets worse, okay? Yeah. If you uh, are burned out, you basically go unconscious. You're forced to rest. Um, I'm just uh, adding that to my card, but I needed to move a guy to do that. Fatigued. All right. So uh, having discovered that this gun situation is perhaps not uh, beneficial to him, um, Emil is going to th just bludgeon the thing attacking him with the gun. <laughs> Very good. Uh... So... Uh, um, would you like me to roll that as a... Yeah, it would be a close combat. Okay. Let's roll close combat plus... Uh, let's let's just go with might. It feels about right here. Okay. Successes! Uh, yeah, let's see if they can... Uh, nope. Um, so you spin the gun around and like by its like trigger guard and just bury it in this... Candy Striper's face. And they sort of like twitch a couple times mm -hmm. and take one more step toward you and then just fall over dead. I thought so. <laughs> Ow. Um, there's one Candy Striper still up. And that is the one that had run up on Vess, right? Just making sure I've got all my people where they belong. 
Okay, excellent. That will then bring us to Linux. What you got? Um, there's still the three shooters up at the. Um... Yep, up at the gate, and they're all sort of. Um, there's one that's still standing in the middle, just reloading their their uh, crossbow pistol, but the other two have sort of ducked around the sides of the door and taken cover. Okay, I'll take a shot at the reloader. Okay. Is Clutch going off with that other uh, turret? Uh, Clutch doesn't have anything that they can fire at in that other turret except you. <laughs> like you're, <laughs> she's probably she's not going to be like. Oh, <laughs> Pretty sure I can just pick. Yeah, you know, she's she's not that confident in her firearm skills. Gotcha, gotcha. No, that makes total sense. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I sincerely doubt that they're gonna roll a miracle here, but we'll find out. Okay. Nope. Yeah, you um, plant it right between the eyes, and the intern drops. Any other movement actions? Things you'd like to try? Um, is the bay door open? Yeah, they've opened that middle bay door. Okay. Is I can I see through it? Is it there? Is it lit beyond? Yeah. You can absolutely see down it. Uh, as you you know, looking down that hall, it looks like a um sort of mold encrusted, uh, rust covered, filthy oh. hospital hallway. Okay. I will get back in the car as my movement then. All right. You hop back in the car and that yep. will bring us to Vess. So do I, are there any targets? Cause the, cause Linus just took out the one that was by me, right? Linus oh. took out the one that was on uh, a meal. I would assume. No, no, no. Yeah. Linux took yeah. out the one. Linux took out one of the interns. The interns were up in the, the uh, okay, then I'm going to crack the one that's in front of me. In the yep. Place. So you're still like locked up with that one intern. Yeah, great. Now, remember, you do have a, a plus one complication right now to your action. Right, because so, of my fatigued. Is that correct? Right. So okay. if you only get one success, you can basically choose whether you're going to um, hit them anyway and take another fatigue okay. or whether you're going to allow that to miss and not well, end by a complication. Hope I hit them. Okay. Oh, yeah. there we go. Three successes total. There you go. You hit it, you hit it with a net. Uh, she'll see if she's tough enough to take it. She's not. She's close, but not quite. Um, as you cave her head in. Any uh, movement or anything along those lines? I'll step back towards the vehicle since there's no more in melee range, but I don't have a, a pithy remark because I'm not as clever as Emil. <laughs> That's fair. Fixer, what you got? I'm going to call to the rest of the crew. Am I good at like tying things up? Not in like a, like a sexy way, but in like a, like a bad guy way. Why did you feel the need to have to, <laughs> to, to distinguish those two things in this Is situation? Bad guy sexy? I just need somebody to tie something up. You know what? I'll do it myself. Who is that skill? Would it be athletic? <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the role on that? I, I know we're all that's, staring that's at That's actually like, a great oh. question. I'll, I'll argue survival well, since that's well, not tying skills. I know. I was going to say if it's a sexy way, then it might be something else, but probably survival. Yeah, I sur guess survival. Survival or might be, persuasion? Might be survival in a sexy way, if, depending on what I have persuasion I mean, and athletic. Yeah. So I could do it in the sexy right. way. Yeah, I guess it depends, really. I mean, you could go survival. You could go close combat, really. Mm, a mm. grapple tie. Right. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm still looking for somebody to tie something up. I, I can I try. Know. What are you saying over the 50 cal? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try I'll move towards Fixer to help tie this person up. <laughs> I didn't right. say person. It's just I, tie I, something I didn't say that out loud. That was out of character. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so you start moving over towards Fixer. Um, yeah. That'll bring us then. Uh, 
Are you doing anything else, I guess, Fixer, besides just calling for help? Uh, I'm probably going to take the start out of my arm. It doesn't look like I should have it in there. No, yeah, it's probably <laughs> not great. Uh, you pull it out and like it spurts, like blood shoots out of the wound, but there's also like some uh, green and yellow kind of ichor that accompanies it. Whatever you just got shot with probably wasn't very healthy. <laughs> Um, this is, a, fine. This is the short answer. Um, but you do manage to pull out. Do you want to try to make a medicine check to treat yourself? Uh, it would be at a, uh, you'd have the complication from the actual fatigue and your difficulty is equal to the number of, of wounds that you've, or the number of fatigues you've taken. So you would just need to get two successes to be able to sort of treat the wound. Um, you know what? I'll try to treat the wound. As I wait for someone to help me uh, tie up someone who is totally not this guy because I'm playing it cool. Not really, but sort of. Um, I'll do that with medicine and I'm going to say it's, it's okay if I use, I mean, I can use intellect. It's okay if I use stamina because it's like bleeding and I'm yeah, trying not absolutely. to pass, you're, you're, pass out. You're, you're trying to keep it together. You're trying to overcome a complication that's literally about being fatigued. So I see no reason why that wouldn't work. Perfect. Um, uh, does this count as a first aid action? Yes. Okay. I do have a skilled healer, which um i gain plus two enhancements oh Beautiful. never mind i have to be in a calm and quiet place and we are not there yep you are in neither of those things. i am neither neither of those places so ignore that um all right and stamina oh no all right do not, do not do that <laughs> <laughs> so um congratulations you gain a momentum um would you <laughs> I guess it's kind of a, a, a net loss. Do you want to um, swap out your existing fatigued with just being fatigued from exerting yourself? Or do you want to just sit on, on the uh, failure and take another momentum? <laughs> Difference being is this other fatigue you would just have to recover from naturally. Um. But you wouldn't know. have the toxin in you anymore. Uh, I'll go with have to recover from it naturally, but no longer have the toxin okay. in me right. because I am not confident in my dice rolling skills. <laughs> That's fair. All right. Um, yeah. The good news is, is you've, uh, you've, you're pretty sure you've gotten the poison all out. The bad news is now your arm is just like super sore. Um, you just, you want to nap at this point already. That's where you're at. Uh, that will bring so us. Say we all to uh, Lep. What you got? Uh, so there's one person behind cover, right? Um, there are two people behind cover at this point. The two interns, because uh, when the when the middle door opened, there were three interns. Mm -hmm. They all fired their rounds. They all need a round of reload. So the two that were on the edges took cover. Now they're probably about three quarters cover. By like you can see shoulders sticking out. Because the oh that's fine. Not I'm, I'm that not actually easy. gonna aim for the shoulder. 50 okay. cal doesn't care about cover. Right. You're just gonna go through the wall. I'm just going to chew the entire wall where they're taking cover. Right on. That's fair. Um they are on either side of it. So uh you can either divide your successes between the two or you can just pick one and say I'm gonna aim to turn one into a fine mist. Beautiful. Go for it. Um, I'm going to give you a uh, plus one enhancement in addition to the weapon because it's a still target. They're not moving. So that will make a total of six successes with all the bonuses. Okay. Um, yeah, you take out like a six inch deep layer of that doorway. It just turns to dust. And behind that dust, you see, like, a mist. <laughs> You're down to one intern. Knock, knock. <laughs> um, the intern will take this turn to finish loading uh, his weapon. Um, that brings us to the next round. Uh, the candy strapers would go if they weren't all dead. 
Um, so that brings us to a meal. What would you like to do? <laughs> How far is the intern from me? Uh, a range band. So uh, you can make it in this turn and still act. Can I throw the gun that I previously used as a bludgeoning weapon at him? You can. Uh, I'm going to give you another complication because that's not weighed for throwing. Nope. Um, so you'll be looking at a complication of two, but you absolutely can do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do it because that's what Emil would do. All right. um, can so he you have just, momentum to spend on this or something to make it better? Because that's just too fucking cool. I mean, there is you, there is momentum in the pool. So you have uh, the one that was just gained because when someone gains, gains momentum, the party gains momentum. Um, and there, you start off each session with a, a number of momentum in the pool equal to the players at the table. So Are you, you can cool with me using that. Yeah, you can spend up to half the pool in one action, I do believe. So we've got one, I believe, if I recall correctly. No, you got uh, six. Oh, six. My bad. Because you start with one for each player, mm. just out the gate. Three. Three sound good. Two. Yeah. Two, three. Yeah, do it. All right. Uh, I'll use three, and I will just rip the the bolt pistol like out of the fallen. I keep wanting to say gen turn. Um, nurses face and just chuck it at the guy and i will roll like zeth's which is again not this old house but bless his heart he's gonna try and that feels like force too so we will do athletics and might a meal right. oh then honey you, then you get three additional dice yeah. so yeah if you have a trait that's a three you can just roll that one or I do. Wow. Oh, so close, uh, too. Uh, so close. And yet. And yet with. Um, so you throw this, and as you throw it, like, you feel a wave of nausea hit you um, as this exertion pulses that toxin through you. You take another level of... Uh, of uh, fatigue. The gun sort of goes end over end and just lands at um, at the intern's feet. I felt better. <laughs> Excellent. That brings us to Linux. What would you like to do? Guess I'll try and tie up this dude. Okay. With what? What do you got to tie up things with? Fixer. Yeah. I'm going to grab his shirt and pants that he disrobed from. Is there any the like arson. wire or anything around that would be sturdier than somebody's? You did have a bandolier. You okay. did have a bandolier. Yeah. I'll so use the bandolier and it, I will. Just so that I'm clear on this. You're gonna... You're gonna, him you're gonna to step him. away to grab the bandolier and not drag him with you, right? I have him in theory, and do, I'm going to get the bandolier. And and Linux is doing the that. All right. So as Linux runs past to grab the bandolier, he is going to try to uh, pull himself free and and run. Um, so let's cool. do. Cool. I'm gonna stab him. Let's do a uh, an opposed roll. Um, you'll both roll uh, close combat effectively. All right. Just get his sheet over here. He is not great at close combat. Okay. Um, so he starts to like... <laughs> So, Fixer, how bad do you want to hold on to him? Uh, pretty badly, because I do not trust this dread surgeon, weird guy. You want to hold on to him liar. bad enough that you're willing to take another uh, condition? Because you still do have the minus one, right? Or the plus one complication? Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, yes, because I think it'll help the party. All right. So he like, <laughs> like as soon as Lennox is past him, he like does a kip up, right? Like he is totally fine. And you manage to hold on to him. But like, as you do, like you feel muscles in that arm, like start to tear as you're holding him. Oh. In place. <laughs> <Yeah. Ow. laughs> and you take a, another, uh, this time uh, you can you can choose if it's going to be an in, an, uh, an injury condition or another stress condition. Uh, I'll take an injury condition at this point. Okay, excellent. So that does not increase your complication at this point, right? You just get bruised effectively, right? Yep. Cool. All right. So um, yeah, it it sucks, but you do keep a grip on him. Hurry up, um, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Lennox, you come running out with the stuff and he's up and he's struggling. Uh, all right, we're gonna try this. And I'm gonna all right, what, what pool would you what pool did we settle on? Is this is this business or pleasure? <laughs> I guess is the <laughs> 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 yes. The answer is yes. We're just going to do a dexterity persuasion. All right. I'll allow it. Uh, and you're not currently uh, fatigued at all, right? Nope. Not once. Right. And one so success. You, yep, so you tie him up. Um, he makes a few remarks about, uh, oh, you've done this before, huh? Um, <laughs> and. <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> and uh, that will wrap up your turn and bring us uh, to Vess. And you were moving in that direction as well, right? Yeah, I was. Um, it, how well, how securely is he tied? Is there merit in me adding on to it or should I? Well, there's no such thing as being too careful. I mean, that's true. Um, so I will go and also add extra bindings to this. And what skill set would you like to rely on? <laughs> Business. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say I'll do a close combat check. because All right. Like... Excellent. So we'll do close combat and dexterity, question mark. Okay. Um, are you trying? You can, if you would like, also uh, injure him a little bit in the in this process because you got enough successes to do so. Sure. Um, <laughs> all right. So you sort of like twist his ankle, like yeah, you're not going too far. Yeah. Um, as as you tighten those bindings down. Got a temper, man. That brings us to fixers. Oops. Uh my arm hurts. Um, Vess, you got shot by one of those darts, right? Yeah. All right. Come, come, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Go, goes there. Goes there. <laughs> I am going to attempt to do a uh, medicine roll. Um, and I should have mentioned this earlier. I do have a specialty field medicine. Okay. So um, the, the way specialties would apply is like, for example, um, th this actually might've come in handy earlier when you were trying to figure out like what was going on. You're making a different role, different scale. Yeah. Cause they're cross bonuses. They're, they're synergy. They're not immediate to the medicine scale. Got Makes it. Makes sense. Yes, absolutely. All right. So I'm going to roll medicine. I'm going to do uh medicine and intellect and hope i have enough to buy off my complications you do and enough yes. to to clear uh to clear vess out from the uh toxins within cool i'm gonna be um now stay still this is gonna hurt pull the dart out i'm gonna take my dagger i'm gonna actually pierce the wound a little bit to help get the toxins out or bleed bleed it a little bit more. I'm gonna squeeze the wound a little bit. Oh, and then oh. after I squeeze the wound, I almost got it out. Almost uh, got it okay. out. Almost got it out. It's okay. Oh. It's okay. Almost there. Almost oh. there. Almost there. And I'm gonna wrap it's it up. Terrible. It's like it's like 
cottage cheese coming out of that when when she, <laughs> when she's working the no. wolf. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty funky. Oh um, man, that smells. Hey, thanks, appreciate it. You do get it Ugh. clear. Um, and that will then bring us to Lep. Gun was here. Gun goes here. And dance the other direction. Mm -hmm. I'm just literally going to feed straight across at them. All right, let's uh, get that. I'll give you again the plus one because they're not they're not a moving target. That's a negatory, and I rolled a one in there too. Did you? I rolled. I rolled two ones with eight dice and no successes. Well, I'm excited for you. The good news is, is that you gained two <laughs> momentum as a group. Um, the bad news is, is that the gun uh, barrel overheats uh, because you've just been laying on this gun this whole time. Uh, and you see like the barrels turn red and Ooh. bullets stop coming out of them. I let go of the trigger. <laughs> Very good. Smoke starts pouring off of it. Uh, Does red make it shoot faster? No, 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 no. Stop, stop shooting. You, you got to let these things breathe. They're alive. She looks at it. Oh, shit. This, this one's fragged. That's my entire turn. Yep. The intern comes around as the two of you are uh, discussing this situation. And, oh, I rolled the wrong person's. That's the same pool, though. Um, the intern, intern comes around the corner and you see as Clutch is like looking at the barrels, like, I don't know if I had an hour or something, maybe, and like a dart go into her eye and she like falls back. Oh, shit. <laughs> the intern ducks back around. Should have been behind cover. That's why these shields are on these guns. It's a damn shame. Neil, what you got? <laughs> Should have let me shoot the rockets. Where is that intern in relation to Emil right now? So, uh, it, to the best of my knowledge, and correct me if this sounds wrong to any of you, you are all on the side of the vehicle. Um, you're, the, the back of the vehicle is actually pointed straight at the uh, gate that's open. You're all on the driver's side at this point, right? So this guy's basically 25, 30 feet away, um, just behind that, the, the wall by that open door. Because you got the three doors, the one in the middle is open. He's around the corner, like you see his shoulder poking out as he's trying to reload his. Okay. His and Jester is still here too. Oh, yeah. Jester is still there, and Jester is now tied up and has a sprained ankle. Not going to hit him right now. That's for later. <sighs> I'm trying to think. Like, how can... He just turns around and looks at the group and goes, How are we doing, team? <laughs> but all right. <laughs> we lost an eye up here. It was all fun and games until then. <laughs> kind of like trudges back inward from where he had been slightly outward. He goes, can anybody help me with this whole situation? And like points at the owls on him. <laughs> yeah, given the timing of how that worked, you probably still have scalpels stuck in your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I can help. Like Red surgeons inside. give you wings. <laughs> <laughs> you start to hobble inside. Um, uh, Lep uh, Clutch says, "If you're gonna help somebody, how about me?" And she's like trying to stand up and like holding her face, and you see blood like pouring around her fingers. That's Helping. actually probably a good idea because she can gun. Ow. Oh, well, 
doesn't know what the shield is for. <laughs> Will you just help her? I was leaning past it because you broke my gun. It's not broken. It's just red. Children. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dad. Help the one who's good at gun. <laughs> You called me a child. <laughs> While this exchange is going that. on, uh, what would Linux like to be doing? So he's tied up, right? What's that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jester is tied up and has a sprained ankle. Can I see the uh, you can, you, intern? You can see a shoulder enough to take a shot at. He's got cover, so you'll have, you'll have a plus two complication. But. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, good. You okay. double tap? The first bolt goes into his shoulder and spins him around, like out into the middle of the hallway, and then you just hit him again right through the middle of the head and he drops down. Style points. <laughs> well done. Note to self: also, don't make Linux angry. No, it's and okay. That, you can make me mad. I don't care. And how that, come you? How come you're okay with making me angry? I pasted half a team over there. You don't uh, count. And that completes your first combat. I count. Yeah, look, you matter. Uh, Jester's like tugging at his bonds and he's like, you sent me out there to die. It, uh, yeah, but also the poison didn't affect you at all, which is... Very sketch and sus and sketchy sus. All right, look, no. you want you want the truth? No, like, I can't yeah. anymore. I, at this point, I'm just gonna uh -huh. kill you. Painfully, that, slowly. That's fine. Ain't none of us walking out of here. First of all, oh, yeah. You're right. We're driving. Everyone, shut up. First of all young man and he just like rips one of the scalpels out and chucks it at jester at like point blank at this point <laughs> he screams as some blood rips out the up. other one chucks it at him <laughs> he and then again. he just like plops Those down on his like a lot shut up and he just like plops down on his butt he's like you're going to tell us exactly what we're walking into young dread surgeon and you're going to tell us right now or i'm going to break every finger on all of your stupid hands look the the supplies is true these guys have got all sorts of stuff stashed in there i am very disappointed in you oh that's really heartbreaking but I don't think they're going to let me live now. And they're certainly not going to let you out of your life. They wanted, they were going to make me part of the family. They were going to let me in. They were going to let me stay here and they were going to, they were going to fix me up. All I needed to do was bring them parts. This is getting visibly agitated. All I, all that they wanted was parts for the juggernaut. I figured the Mac would be a nice way to sweeten the pot. I'm st I'm sorry, Juggernaut. Yes, let's I'm rewind. <laughs> that the chief of surgery here. He's got a a pet project. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I I never seen it. I just heard the others mm -hmm. talk about it a little bit. So far, they got twelve people attached to it. But that, mm. Okay. As I'm casually walking around the interior, I'm going to look for lengths of chain, strong cord, anything that looks like it would be nice and sturdy enough to drag someone behind a vehicle. Right on. In the interior, you look walking through the interior of the Mac? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of like 
loose bits laying around. Um, for her part, uh, Clutch is just sitting in the passenger seat, um, gently try like like flicking the dart that's sticking in her eyeball. <laughs> she's, she's like, <laughs> Playing jaw harp with it somehow, <laughs> like it's very strange. Stop! 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 I could go over there. And you look, and yeah, it's like her eyeball is still intact, and there's just a dart in it. <laughs> Stop flicking it. She was gonna make it worse. She goes, "Why are you upside down?" <laughs> Stop. Because we all are. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, Vess is going to go up and stand next to him, kind of bat just on her shoulder, not in his field of vision. She's actually kind of standing behind him, and she's just watching a meal, waiting for for him to to give her permission. She says, or Jester says, they they need parts. They need they need more parts. Most of the parts that have been brought in here for the last six months have gone into the juggernaut. Well, I I have wonderful news for you, and it's that you're going to become part of the family because you can be parts too. And he just like stands up and looks at Vess and is like, all yours. (laughs) Great. She's going to walk and come around the front of him and be like, you're tainted, right? He nods. And she is going to, with every word, punctuate with just beating the hell out of him. Like, we are not fucking writers. <laughs> uh, you flatten his skull uh, on the pavement. I'm sorry, Vess. I'm sure that was hard. <sighs> okay. Fixer, you're trying to pull this dart out of uh, the eye. I'm going to give you a complication of two to your medicine roll. If you don't resolve that complication, the eyeball's coming with it. Oh. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you go ahead and use some of our momentum? I know I earned a sum on my botch. <laughs> Am I, I'm not in a calm, quiet place. I'm not. Um... Yeah. And there's a calm that settles over you after a blunder. I was going to say, have we ever been in a calm, quiet place? <laughs> Never in our lives. I was going to say, that's, that's on, a, a, um, on, a, on that's, apocalyptic scale, we're actually pretty good. I mean, we none of us can hear anything right now because the 50 cal, so it's very quiet. <laughs> you're not as a, quiet as it gets. You're not in active combat, and there's no raiders immediately around, so I will let you use that calm, quiet place. I will. I, I, I'm uh, feeling generous. Uh, okay. I'm, which just gives me two enhancements, so I still have to make make the roll. And then you um, have the one. Uh, you also have the one complication for your wound. So. Yep, one complication for my wound. Uh, does uh, are you guys okay with me taking some momentum? How much momentum should I take? I'd say grab at least two. I mean, I gained two from melting the gun, and they're gonna have to fix the gun. So. <laughs> And I thoroughly wasted it earlier, so. Okay, I will, as long as everyone's okay with it, I will snag two. Um, I'm going to roll uh, intellect and medicine. Okay. Uh, medicine, intellect, oh. Look at uh, that. And then I'm going <laughs> to do a roll of two, which is academics is technically two dice, so. You not only um, remove the dart and uh, save her eye, but in fact, you heal the wound condition. Like you're able to pull it out in just such a fashion that it's not as bad as it looks. You're able to get it, you know, she's going to need to keep that eye like patched probably for a few days or whatever, but it's not nearly as bad as it could have been. Uh, you're gonna be fine. It's not as bad as it looks. Hold on. Let me let me just just patch that up there. There you go. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. Yeah. Holy cow! Everything's right set up again. I don't feel like I'm gonna puke. Yeah. The the wonders of modernish medicine. Says well, I, I, good. I'm I've never been so glad to be. You know to receive quality medical care 
it's fortunate, I guess, that we're right next to a hospital. And as she says that, you start to hear numerous sirens kick off. And as you look out, you can see like there's like a couple of uh, like wrecked ambulances that their lights start going. Uh, as if someone maybe had pulled like a facility wide alarm. Should, should we go? Let's get him a ring keating. That's the discussion for next session. <laughs> <laughs> Any right. questions, comments, complaints, <laughs> or concerns about today's session? <laughs> Good time. Good time. Incredible. I had quite a bit of fun. So, uh, did anyone um, complete any aspirations? Oh, I forgot to even look at those. I gave I... a shitty boy a drink. You did. That's true. So that would be a completed as aspiration, and that translates into an experience point, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I know he didn't yell back, but I did yell at him a lot. So does that count as it getting into a yelling match with someone? Um, I would say that he uh, became agitated a few times. He, you know. Cool. <laughs> I, I'd allow it. Um. Anyone else uh, complete any short-term aspirations? I mean, before I even was able to write it down, I was called kid. <laughs> uh, I'll allow it. And oh, no, uh, I, don't, I don't want XP for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the getting it was well enough. The, the, it was its own reward? Yeah. Hey, that's fair. Thanks, so, Pop Pop. So those of you who completed an aspiration, you get one XP. You may... Um, select a new aspiration before next session, in addition to any tweaks. Um, let's see, not all the players uh, achieved short-term, so there's no, nobody uh, achieved a long-term aspiration, correct? No, uh, I also think I only technically achieved a short-term, which was let someone bleed for longer than needed. I mean, you did, I yeah. would say, right? Like. Uh, at I love least that eyeball bleed a little bit. You, yeah, you. you <laughs> yes, you were very concerned with things that were not the 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 person who built the vehicle, the person with who a, can think, you know, like, <laughs> with a fucking dart in their eye. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll allow that. Sure, uh, you did spend half the momentum pool in a single scene, so congratulations. You may all get uh, one XP from that. And I would say that you reached a story milestone. You discovered uh, what Jester's um, plan ultimately was. So now what you'll need to sit with between now and next session is what's the juggernaut? Do you care enough to stay and find out? How much does finishing this job mean to you? And if all the medical supplies are in there that are supposed to, I mean, that's a lot of money you'd be walking away from. So things to think about between now and then. Um, so for us and our home audience, what does a, miles, a story milestone mean? So a story milestone would just be like a significant beat in the story, unlocking a situation, discovering a mystery, uh, finding, you know, getting to a, a turning point. Um, being able to arrive at a, at a, at a turning point, uh, a significant dramatic moment. I would say that uh, the Jester's untimely demise would qualify as that. I think it was rather timely. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, that being the case, I think that's where we'll uh, say our goodbyes and our outros. Uh, I'll have everyone go ahead and just tell us, you know, who you are, what you do, who you've been playing. Uh, pronouns, pronouns, and where we can find you on the internet. Um, and this time we'll start off with uh, Michael. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and oh. kick us off? Oh, hi. I'm supposed to keep the tradition going of being surprised when I get calls. So, 
My name is Michael. Uh, I was playing Lep uh, Leopota, uh, the uh, sensorite uh, transitioned from nuclear family over to dank dark cults. I was your fun uh, gun bunny tonight. And uh, yeah, I had a blast. Pronouns are he, they. Uh, so are leps. And uh, you can find me on, uh, mostly I do things via Instagram, uh, where it's the greater evil, one word on Instagram. Or you can find me on Facebook when I rarely update it at Mr. Pucci for my Facebook page. Beautiful. And who's next? Oh, let's pass it over to Jesse. I'm Jesse Morrow. I played um, Linux Limewire, the digitarian that also apparently can shoot and pleasure tie people up. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, so are Linux's. Um, probably don't want to look me up on the internet. Um, but I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I don't think I've ever posted on Instagram before, though, so... TikTok. Who's uh, who's next? Uh, Katie. Oh, I'm muted. I'm so surprised I'm muted. Um, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Katie. She, her. Uh, I played Fixer. Also, she, her. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Katie Griffin Writer, or you can look up Most, uh, most Improbable. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed this game, and that's about it. Uh, I'm going to pass it on over to Chris Kitts. I'm Chris Kitts. I was playing a mutantor. Uh, we both use he, him pronouns, and I had a lovely time this evening. Um, thank you for allowing me to make a variety of faces, which may or may not indicate constipation levels. Uh, poop joke. Uh, you can find me. <laughs> you can find me on um, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch as DJ Stygian, S T Y G I A N. Um, I haven't been streaming lately because I've been doing real person gigs. Whoa. Uh, and yeah, this was very good. And I will pass it off to Heather. Hello, uh, I am Heather. Uh, she, her, I play Vess. You're very angry, tainted um, this time around. Also, she, her. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch at Rough, Roughshod Films. I will be streaming horror movies and making fun commentary for the month of October. And I said it, which means I actually have to do it now. So <laughs> we're going to have some fun. So thanks, guys. This is, this is great. Thank you all so much for being here. It's been an honor and a pleasure to run this for you. Uh, thank you so much, audience, for uh, watching at home. Um, my name is Travis Legg. He, him. No objection to the singular they. And uh, yeah, when I'm not here, I run games over at Plastic Gauge Plays. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Travis Legg. And you should go buy some Scarred Lands books when you get done buying some Dystopia Rising books. Um, so uh, we will see you next time. Until then, get your shots, socially distance, uh, take care of yourselves and each other. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye.